G'day folks, welcome to the Fife Life, Australian Canary Hobby. If you're new to the channel, I'm Mike, and these are my fifes. And uh, in this latest episode, journal number 14, I'm going to be talking about a review of the, the breeding season, uh, which for me up here in North Queensland, pretty much done and dusted. Uh, so for me, uh, we've, we've made it through uh, three rounds of breeding for some of the hens, uh, for the majority of the hens, two rounds uh, across Australia. Probably for a lot of people, they're just uh, rolling into their first round or getting through the first round. So we are definitely ahead, but that's the game up here uh, being so far north and uh, where it is starting to warm up. All right, so uh, there's been a few thrills and spills along the way. Uh, there's been some good, some very good, a few things that haven't been as, as successful, which I'd really like to talk to and hopefully that'll give some people uh, tips and pointers and maybe even some help for, for next year. Certainly some things that uh, I've, I've needed to look at and I, and I want to put in place so that next year's equally as successful or even a little bit better. But I think it's going to be hard to top because uh, we really have had a very successful breeding season. And as you can see, the cages are pretty full. The birds still look really good. So uh, I'm wrapped and uh, I think bringing fifes into my shed this year was a very good decision. All right, so let's get started. As usual, there's a couple of things that we always do. And the first one's shout outs. Okay, shout outs. Well, here we are. Uh, look, only a couple, but I wanted to say a very big shout out uh, to one of our biggest followers uh, the channel here, and it's Mick Tiffany, uh, and of course, Matt Eld. Guys, it was lovely to see that you caught up. Uh, I don't want to be a spoiler, so uh, no doubt Mick has uh, some things that he'll be sharing on his channel. That's Tweet Street. Um, but to receive that lovely photo of you two lads standing there together, you're two of my favorite people in the hobby, uh, definitely from abroad. And I just want to say a big thank you and a big shout out for all your support of, of my channel and the motivation that you've given me, but also the support that you've given the Australian Fife Club of New South Wales. We really appreciate it. The other one is, I want to give a shout out to uh, a podcast. It's All Things Feathered. Now, it's on Spotify, and I only just recently discovered this. Uh, and whilst there's not a, a huge volume of episodes, uh, I've listened now to most of them at least twice, and uh, it's it's brilliant. There's some really good tips and pointers. There's some great advice. Real uh, experts from the, the you know the avicultural uh, hobby that we are in. And uh, look, it, it's just a really good listen. And while you're in the shed, you can just have that playing in the background. So that's all things feathered, and it's on Spotify. So jump over there. It's free, and it's definitely worth a listen. All right, that shoutouts. Now I'm going to sit down and we're going to go through uh, what is a review of the 2024 breeding season, my first breeding season, with these lovely little five canaries. Let's go. All right, uh, the main topic and the main part of today's episode is going through uh, review and a review of the breeding season here in the shed for 2024. And I've been, I've been pretty good at keeping a little bit of a log. And um, that's probably one little tip that I can give people is if you keep a little log of what's happening, maybe not every day, although I have kept a pretty detailed one this year, um, at least every week what's happening in the shed through the breeding season what birds are doing what what things you've noticed occurring in your shed uh, i think it's good to then go back and freshen up on on the previous year when you come into the next breeding season so that's what i've done is i've kept a fairly just a fairly a detailed journal um, and the journals that i've put up here on on youtube will be also another resource which is why it was good to start the filming um, so that i can go back and have a look 
because there's many things now that I reflect on, um, you know, like the conditioning of the birds, the nutrition, the diet, all the things that I'm going to talk about here, that I look back on it and I think that's probably why I've ended up where I am. And where I am is that the, the breeding season review is that I ran with 12 cocks this year and 15 hens. Uh, in the first round, I had uh, the birds paired up and we had 38 and 12 hens went to nest. So 38 chicks in the first round, which was a very good start to the season. Uh, look, no doubt the wheels fell off a little bit when I had a bit of a meltdown, but that was really around uh, one or two cock birds being a little bit uh, too hot and heavy and, and a few eggs getting smashed, but it really didn't affect the, the long-term results of, of those numbers, which is very good. In the second round, uh, I had eight hens that went to nest, and we ended up with 21. Now, not as good, but I will explain why. And I'm not disappointed with that result because of some of the things that I did. In the third round, uh, we've had 12, and you can sort of hear and see around me, there's still some hens on nests, and I still do have some, some young chicks that haven't fledged. Uh, but five hens went to nest in the third round, and we ended up with 12. And as of this week, and as of just a few days ago, it looks like we're gonna have three more, hopefully. Uh, there was two pairs that I, I thought probably I was running cocks in and out uh, with those hens and I thought they won't, that they won't lay again, they didn't look like they were showing any interest. And then when I took the nest pans out, a couple of days later I found some eggs on the floor of the, the cages. And so I just scooped them up, I put them under a, a spare hen, a little variegated hen that I've got behind me, and I've just candled those eggs and all three are fertile. Now the hens haven't gone back to even looking like they're gonna lay, or I put nest pans in straight away to see if they'd sort of show an interest in sitting in dummy eggs, they weren't interested. But the little hen behind me is, uh, she's a great feeder. She's been a very good feeder with the other clutches that I've fostered to her. And so I'm really excited that it looks like there could be a couple more. And that's from the, the birds that I really wanted to breed this year. So three, three rounds from those two hens, albeit there's only three eggs between the two of them, it's still, very good and I'm really happy with that. So total so far, 71 chicks. Uh, that's my first season with Fife's and I think it's a, it's a pretty good result. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it could have been better. And I'm gonna talk about now, you know, first of all, what worked and what went really well and what was good. And then I'll talk about what was not so good. Cause I don't wanna say what was, what was bad because nothing's really been bad. Um, they've just been delightful little birds to have in the shed. They've, they're fantastic little feeders. Um, you know, I gave them the best chance to breed and they've returned the favour uh, by just doing a fantastic job. And I really am, I'm in love with them. I have have just totally uh, reignited my passion for the hobby, which was dwindling a little bit after a couple of tough seasons. So firstly, what worked, I just want to say everything from Matt. The nest pans especially, mate, they are fantastic. They're awesome. Uh, really, really love them. Very user friendly. Um, the, the egg cup drawers you gave me, everything that you, you donated to the channel, I'm just so appreciative of Matt. And that's Matt at the Canary Room, but mate, especially the nest pans, they were just brilliant, so thank you. Now the conditioning of the birds. Uh, I did a little bit of reflection in the lead up to filming this today, and I look back on the birds and I look at how good they looked, how fit they looked, and, and a lot of it comes down to, first of all, the diet. So I gave the birds fresh food all year round and I was really 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 particular about that and I've spoken about it in the other journals uh, I went to a lot of effort to source good produce fresh produce and I gave the birds a lot of fresh foods particularly leafy greens um, you know their, their veggie mix that I was giving them and I just think that combined with really good seed that's a good start is just to have the birds in good condition off the back of good diet the supplements. Uh, I think, I, I, in hindsight, looking back on the journal I did about what's in the water, I did actually start to cut it back a little bit. And I cut it back to where I was, uh, you know, probably twice a week I was uh, giving the solubite D and then the calcium I was just doing once a fortnight. When it came breeding season, I actually just went to once a week. So I wasn't going twice a week like I said I was going to. Um, they retain calcium within their system and look, I had no soft eggs, I had no soft shells with the eggs, I had no issues with birds being egg bound. So I'm going to stick with, 
I'm going to do it once a fortnight in the off season just to keep the calcium levels consistently in the birds and then go weekly when we get to the lead up to the breeding season. The other thing is with the supplements, I spoke about shifting to Solyavite D, the, the breeder specific one, and I made a shift uh, pretty early in the breeding season off the back of wanting to stimulate the pituitary gland, which is very important in breeding, um, and I actually started to put it in the egg food. And I think, look, I can't say whether it was better, but it was definitely better than having it in the drinkers where sometimes they choose not to drink it. So I don't know if it gave me a better result, but it was a lot more user friendly that way. It's a multivitamin as well, which means that the chicks have been getting it and everyone looks really healthy and really fit. And we haven't lost many chicks. I've lost a couple, which I'll talk about, but, but not many at all. Um, so that was a good thing that worked really well. Uh, medicating. I didn't over medicate these birds. Uh, I normally do, I normally worm the birds about, I'm gonna say once a year, sort of do it, you know, once, once they get through the molt. Uh, and they're not they're not fragile after molting. I, I'll run the wormer through them, and then I just use S76, um, and and that product's really really good. That's uh, Dr. Rob Marshall's product, and I'm just going to stick to that. I didn't do a lot of other stuff. I, I didn't use um, any, any ivermectin or anything like that. So I'm I'm going to stick with what I did this year because it worked and the birds didn't get over medicated. So that was good. Um, the hens were fit. Now I gave the hens three months of conditioning out in the aviary to fly to get fit and they have the the birds have pulled through that i've got hens that have raised three nests and they are still looking really good so there's no fatigue in the shed which is really good at the end of the breeding season uh husbandry look it, it hurts me it pains me to look at the state of my shed it is thrashed and trashed so if you are new to uh the channel if you're new to the fife life this is not the normal state of my shed. Uh, I, I did say to Andrew, the club president, I said, mate, I just want my tidy shed back um, because looking at the, the grates in the bottom and, and you know, it's just the state of them. I've kept the perches really clean. I've done everything that I can do without disrupting the birds. But if you look closely, it's really, it's not my standard, but that's what happens during the breeding season. The husbandry into the lead up though really did help keep the birds in good health. Uh, and that's just me. That's just how I keep my birds. So that won't change. The big one, the really big one was the lighting. And I've spoken about lighting in, a, in one of the journals, but I dialed it up this breeding season to 13 hours and 45 minutes and just an absolute game changer. It switched the birds on, all right? So if you're breeding canaries and if you've had challenges this year and if you don't have lights, I would seriously be recommending that you get lights in your shed. Uh, I started to dial the lights up uh, incrementally and you can go back and watch the the lighting journal to see and, and I spoke about what I did with the lighting but just an absolute game changer it meant that I could start breeding uh, as of the start of August and it means that I'm pretty much done now at the end of October so it's just lit the birds up literally and that's a figure of speech but they have just been awesome and I can't recommend having lighting in your shed enough if you don't get it it's just game changer uh, the pairs. Now, pairing up birds worked well for me. Uh, I'm pretty busy, I have a pretty busy schedule, but what I did in the first round in having the birds paired up, it gave me a really good start. It gave me good numbers uh, to start off with. So next year, I'm gonna do numbers wise, I'm probably gonna do 12 cock birds again, but I'm gonna run 18 hens. And I'm gonna do 12 pairs to begin with, and then after that, I'm going to do what I've done this year, which I'll talk about a little bit more, which is I'm going to then run the best cocks in the shed over multiple hens. And that this year that has worked well. All right. Now fostering nests out to feeders, that was something that I did. And uh, it meant I had to shuffle things around a little bit, uh, which was okay, but I had to shuffle eggs around um, and put them under uh, some of the hens that were of lesser quality, but were good feeders. And I've got a cinnamon hen in the shed, and God bless her, she has raised three nests, all of four chicks, uh, and none of them have been her own. So she's not a bird that I saw great qualities in. She wasn't a bird that necessarily I wanted to breed from. I did try and pair her to uh, the white ground cock that we have here in the shed, the white variegated cock bird. Uh, she just absolutely belted him. She attacked him, uh, she wasn't interested. 
But what I did do is I put an S pan in there, she laid clear eggs, and then I kept her on dummy eggs until I could start to rotate eggs that I wanted to foster out, which then allowed me and gave me the chance for my better quality birds to get through three rounds and not be fatigued because they haven't fed any of them. So that was something that worked really well. So when I say I'm gonna keep 18 hens next year, I might keep three hens purely off the back that this year they are experienced feeders and they've been really good feeders and I might keep them in the shed just for that role because that helped uh, really help with getting better quality birds. Off the back of saying that, it did decrease some of the numbers because in some of the, the nests I did, I did turf the eggs, I didn't check whether they were fertile or not. They were the lesser quality birds, um, but I wanted to get good quality birds eggs under those birds, which meant, look, we could have hit probably 90 fairly easily this year, because there was four nests of four that I, you know, just wiped completely and said, I'm gonna put better quality uh, birds eggs under those birds. So that was something that I did, worked well, but you know, as with everything, every action has a reaction. Now, uh, a really interesting point is that I, in running pairs, worked out a very effective system that worked well in my shed this year and it's something I'm definitely going to replicate. Now in the case of the second round I actually had four hens that laid clear eggs and the reason that happened is I left the cockbirds in the whole time to help feeding and I basically think they were just so busy feeding chicks they forgot to mate. So in the other nests where I had the pairs I allowed the cockbirds to feed the chicks and assist with feeding for the first two weeks. I then put the wire divider in, uh, like you can see in this cage here. I separated the cockbird and allowed the hen to finish feeding the chicks for another week, week and a half. Then I reintroduced the nest pan, then I reintroduced the cockbird, and uh, that proved in all of the situations or the cases where I did that to be 100% successful. Four eggs in every nest, four eggs all full in every nest. So it's definitely something that I'll be I'll be replicating next year. So run the cock in, let them mate, let them bond, let them rear the chicks for two weeks, then pull the cock bird out, put the divider in. He was still feeding the hens through the, the wire and later on was happily feeding the chicks through the wire. Removed the wire divider and he went straight, in every single case, they went straight back to treading and mating and the hens went straight back to nest. So that's something I'll definitely be doing. Now we get to the not so good. And it said, nothing bad, there's nothing bad. Um, but fostering of eggs means that you have to, in some cases, ditch nests. And there was, uh, you know, some pairs that of lesser quality. They're birds that haven't uh, had the same pedigree or, or had the same results on the show bench prior to me getting them. And so I had to make that decision. And I made that decision off the back of also that there were some birds in the in the shed, whilst of lesser quality, they're very, very good feeders. So I fostered out nests. It did mean that, you know, look, numbers were potentially a little bit down, but when we're talking, you know, 70 plus chicks for a breeding season out of, you know, 12 hens that went to nest, and what, like, that's just great. I'm, I'm not too worried, but, you know, it, it was something that, that's worth mentioning. Now, the other thing, ringing of birds. Oh, I friggin' hate it. Um, I, I obviously, given three years of not having great success with the borders, I haven't had enough experience with it, um, but I just hate it. I find it so fiddly. Um, it's just not something that I enjoy doing. I am looking into next year, I don't show my birds, but next year I am looking at getting split rings because one of the problems that I also have is when I'm really, really busy and my work schedule, I mean, I can work, you know, 60 plus hours a week, and I'm out and about working with clients in home. I've got a dog training center. I'm moving around a lot. Yes, I've got time to duck back in and feed chicks, but I actually missed a couple of nests by a day and then two days to ring them. And I had great difficulty ringing those birds. And in some cases, there's about 10 chicks in the shed at the moment that didn't actually get rung. And part of that as well is that I did ring birds and then was just too busy to check the nest to see if the rings were still on and a couple of the chicks slipped rings as well. So I've ordered some custom rings. They'll be uh, red rings per this year's uh, ring color. Um, and they're actually gonna be uh, TFL, the Fife Life, uh, custom rings uh, for the birds that I couldn't get rings on and they'll be split rings. But I am looking next year at just getting split rings anyway, because 
I have used split rings before and you can just do a heap of birds in one hit. Um, you don't have to do them right on that, you know, accurate day and that time to get it right. So I'm going to look at it. Andrew's looking into it for, for the club and, and there's a, a, a few other people that he thinks it could benefit as well, particularly people with eyesight or if you, it's a bit fiddly with your hands. I just don't enjoy it. I find it a bit stressful. So next year, that could be an option. I've, I've figured it out. I've rung a lot of birds um, and haven't got many rings left. Uh, but next year might go that way. Uh, look, the other thing that didn't go so well, I'm going to say it was an absolute disaster. Um, I had birds in the aviary. I had one cock bird with three hens. Just never again. I'll never do that. Uh, the lighting wasn't controlled. They they fiddled around. A few eggs were laid. Um, there was, you know, eggs on the floor. Who, who knows who laid them and who what hens were jumping in and out of nests. I just wouldn't do it again. It didn't work well. So now we get to then the overall. I think it's a good result. Uh, and I, I'm, I'll say this, I, I'm relieved. I'm really, really relieved. But the other word I'm going to use is fatigued. I'm really tired. <laughs> I've been up at 5 a.m. Um, I've been coming home at 10, 10.30. I've been ducking back out. I've been home again at 2.30, 3 o'clock. I've been back at 6.30 at night. I mean, in any little window that I've had to get back in the shed, I've been back in here. I've been feeding. Uh, I've been spot cleaning. I've just been doing all the little things that we do. Uh, to stay on top of what is the breeding season and keeping these little chicks alive and helping the hens. But I'm relieved because without such a successful breeding season, uh, you know, I was very anxious that the channel would have no merit, that uh, I would be seen as a fraud and, and so on. But uh, I'm looking back and I'm reflecting on all the things that I've done. I've watched all of the journals back again and it's starting to make sense. Um, and it's starting to make sense because the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we have bred birds this year. Um, I'll steal a phrase. I'm going to steal it from uh, Gerald Spencer. Uh, there's one or two I like. There's a couple of good birds in the shed. They're at a bit of an ugly, awkward stage. It's a bit like when I see young puppies. They often grow up before they grow out. Um, so, you know, there's a few in here uh, that have caught my eye from time to time. And in some of the videos I've shared, uh, there's a particular one where the birds were bathing. There was a lovely little uh, yellow buff hen that looks good a nice ground bird um, that's got some nice shape early on so you know look I'm just thrilled that we bred birds I'm thrilled that this means that the, the channel will go on um, I think it was just a great decision to bring the fives in and I mentioned that earlier fantastic little birds if you are getting into the hobby if you are looking for a bird that is productive that will give you a return on your investment that will bring you joy during the breeding season and not heartache I don't think you can go wrong with a, with a five or a pair of fives, okay? So, uh, but maybe get a few more and have a real crack at it uh, like I have this year, but I'm very, very, very happy. Um, what that means now is, as I'm gonna wrap this up, it means that uh, next year's gonna be bigger and better. Now, I'm not gonna spoil it, uh, but I am gonna say that there's a few things happening in the pipeline. Uh, there's some flights that have been booked and when we say going on the road, uh, I'm not going on the road, I'm going on an adventure. And it's gonna be a really special one for the hobby because I'm gonna capture a lot of things while I'm traveling around. Um, and I'll be traveling a long way. I live a long way away from a lot of the people in the hobby and certainly a lot of the people in my club. So I wanna just uh, let everyone know that the channel will continue. Um, there is big things planned for 2025. And off the back of that, there will be some very special episodes uh, you know, with me getting out there and showcasing really what the hobby has to offer on a level that's far bigger than my shed. So that's what's planned. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We have one more episode to come. In that final episode, uh, I'm gonna be just talking a little bit about the retention of birds, what birds I'll be keeping, what plans I have for next year with birds in the shed. Um, it'll look very different because by then I will have given this place a thorough deep clean all the birds will be weaned. Uh, I'm considering, and I think at probably at this stage, it's what I'm gonna do is single off, um, you know, the best 30 plus young birds that I think have potential. And I'm gonna single them off so I can have a really good look at them uh, and really bring them up into uh, a really tip top health condition and quality before then I go back to having multiple birds in a cage. But I'm gonna single off the really good ones and start to have a really good look at birds. I've already moved 26 birds out into the aviary. Um, that's a mix of some young birds and some of the, the breeding birds, the breeding stock birds that I won't be keeping. So 
Still lots happening here. Uh, still a few big jobs ahead of me to sort through all these birds and give the shed a really good tickle and clean up. Um, but I'm happy to do it because we bred birds. And that was what this year was all about, was getting a good base and a good number to set up a very good start of five birds. Uh, I can't thank Peter Southgate enough. I can't thank Andrew Christodoulou enough either, both from the Australian Five Club of New South Wales. Gentlemen, you have done a stellar job in helping me and supplying with birds. Thank you for all your support during the breeding season. And to the rest of you uh, out there who uh, enjoy the hobby and enjoy you know little snippets from me jump on over to the Australian Five Club of New South Wales their Facebook page there's been a few little updates and things I've shared there thank you to every member and all the people that are on that page for your support all right guys that's it I'm tired um, I said I'm fatigued but I'm very happy and so I'm gonna go and have a little afternoon nap now cheers bye for now